Okay, so what we have here is an 05 Nissan Murano with the uh, inoperative uh, fuel gauge and uh, after a lot of messing around here with this vehicle, I think we finally stumbled upon the solution. So, uh, start out here. I got my Vantage hooked up. We got back probed at the, uh, whatever you call this thing, the unified meter device. I think that's what it's called. Uh, look here on the sheet. Yeah, unified meter uh, AC amp controls uh, instrument cluster and uh, apparently some uh, air conditioning and other functions. It's kind of a multi-function box. So we got it back probed on the two wires that go back to the fuel gauge. And if we look here at our uh, at our ohm meter, we can see we got about 106 ohms of resistance. So. Uh, uh, let's just see here. Okay, our problem is that our fuel gauge stays on empty all the time. And since we're plugged into the fuel pump right now, we'll turn the key on here. We'll see our gauge. Well, sure it just moves a little bit off of empty. Basically it stays on empty. So, uh, what we'll do here, it's part of our diagnostic troubleshooting thing. A lot of messing around if you go through the whole trouble tree thing, but what you got to do is find the chart. I'm going to unplug the fuel pump here. I'll set my camera down. Hopefully it won't fall over. And uh, what I got here is a uh, resistor, a 47 or 48 ohm resistor. We'll put that across the terminals. Uh, where our fuel gauge, our sending unit would be to simulate that. There you can see we got the I got the 48 or 47 ohm resistor in there to simulate our fuel level. And we'll go back up here now. And we'll turn our key back on and voila! Look at that. We got a fuel gauge. So, after a lot of hunting around, and this was actually kind of hard, it was buried in shop key, but it was in there. We did, I did find a spec sheet for uh, the fuel gauge, and here we see our, our readings are 81 ohms should read full, or should read empty rather, and all the way down to 2 ohms resistance across the gauge should read full. So, I put one in, that's 47 ohms, which is about halfway, and if we look at her fuel gauge, she's showing about half full. So this was a kind of a tricky thing to figure out here because Snap-on doesn't give us full information. The, the spec or the data on the uh, scanner is actually not very good for this vehicle. It only shows it only shows fuel level as a voltage reading in the engine, and uh, whatever it was showing wasn't sure as heck wasn't showing was kind of a default setting, I think. So uh, I just turned the key back off here and uh, unplug. Try to unplug this thing, okay. And I'll try to stick my back probes back in here to where it was. To where I had them. Find them. Oops. Well, I don't know if the camera falls over by yourself. And there we go. Now we can see on the ohm meter now, on the Vantage, we're showing 40, 48 ohms of resistance, 49. Depends, I don't think I got my things in there. It was a 47 ohm resistor that I grabbed and stuck in there. So, again, uh, a lot of times if you're troubleshooting this stuff, just skip the stupid troubleshooting tree and find the specs. Once you, if you know how to use an amp, if you know how to use your electrical equipment, you know, your, your graphing meter, your DVOM, or your lab scope, just skip over all the stupid troubleshooting stuff about checking this and checking that. Just go straight to the, whatever test you want to use, resistance, voltage, amperage, whatever you want to measure. It's a lot easier if you just find the specs and do the measurements, and if you mess around doing this or doing that, run it through a 35 point step troubleshooting tree to find something as stupid as this. So and it, it also pays to uh, either keep a potentiometer around or keep a 
bunch of variable resistors so that if you want to check a circuit you can put some kind of default value in there and where your sensor or where your uh, rather than buying a risking buying a new sensor if you can just if you have a potentiometer or if you have a bunch of resistors laying around at variable values it's a lot easier just to plug in a resistor in place of where the component is and uh, substitute it and then you know then you can check you check your whole circuit in one one sweep rather than you know messing around pulling the fuel gauge out if you don't have to it's a lot easier just to if you know your values and you got some resistors or potentiometers or something you can set in between there it makes it a lot easier troubleshooting not just this for fuel gauge that goes for pretty much any sending unit if you can somehow duplicate it then you check your whole circuit at one time instead of going through a stupid troubleshooting tree and wasting all your time doing that so again that's just my personal thought is that you've been doing this for a while you don't need a whole troubleshooting tree just find the specs and go right to the specs and then duplicate your circuit the best you can and you'll find the answer a lot quicker than if you start swapping parts around or stuff like that so again I guess that's about it that's my commentary on how to troubleshoot things so I guess that's it